The purpose of us using PASW is for us to be able to analyze our data. And to analyze our data, we're going to need to somehow translate it from its paper form into its electronic form within this program. In saying that, what we're going to do is either based off of your questionnaires, your surveys, or other forms of observation, we are going to assign a variable name as well as define the corresponding attributes which is going to dictate how we can first input the data and second, which analysis that we can use in order to generate the answers that we want. Essentially, each one of the questions from your surveys or questionnaires, those are going to be what we're going to use for each one of the variable names. So however many questions you have, that's how many variable names you should have for your data file. For a real life example, we have provided you guys a sample survey and from there we're going to go ahead and break down each one of those questions and show you guys how you would define a variable as well as the corresponding attributes in essence to figure out which way that we're going to input the data to perform the proper analysis. Let's begin by clicking in the first row under the name attribute column. Question number one in the sample survey asks, what is your name? So we're going to go ahead and call this variable name. So type in name underneath the name attribute. And once completed, hit the enter key on your keyboard. Hitting the enter key on your keyboard not only solidifies the variable name, but it also is going to define the rest of the attributes according to their default settings. So after we assign the variable name, we also have to go through and define the necessary attributes that are going to make a difference in the analysis of our variable. First things first, click in the type column to the right and we're going to choose the type of variable that we're working with. And once again, that is going to dictate how we are able to enter in our data. Depending on the attribute you've selected, there may be a little bit more information that can't be contained within the width of the column. In that case, you'll see a gray ellipsis button that's going to enable us to open a dialog box to define that attribute even further. So in the type column, click on the gray ellipsis button. The variable type dialog box will appear and this is going to enable us to choose what type of variable is this particular question regarding? Is it a numeric variable? Are we just going to enter in numbers as if we ask them what's their age or maybe even what's their street address? Are they going to enter in a particular monetary amount? In which case we would add the dollar variable type which is going to also apply dollar signs as a symbol that it denotes money. Or for instance we're asking them what is their name? In that case, we're going to use the string variable type, which is going to enable us to type in any character that we can type on our keyboards. After selecting the string radio button, let's mouse up to our character's text box and we're going to modify the maximum width that's allowed for this variable. Since we are taking a look at individuals' names in which we administered this survey to, to be a little bit more culturally sensitive, as we understand that different peoples and different ethnic groups, they have longer names, we're going to extend the character space to 12 to allow more characters to be included when we enter in the people's information from our survey. Let's delete 8 from the character's text box, and we're going to replace that with 12. We are all done defining the variable type. So to exit and confirm these updates and changes, click on your OK button towards the bottom of your dialog box. As mentioned earlier, the label attribute is going to enable us to define further what we are not going to be able to denote just from a simple variable name. So if someone were to look at this and just see name, they would have no idea, what are we naming? Is this our name? Is this our pet's name? Is this the name of our school? We're not 100% sure. So to kind of delete some of that um, miscommunication, they've provided a label attribute in which you can describe what that variable name stands for. So let's go ahead and type in the actual question from the survey in the variable label column. 
type in the question, what is your name? After you've typed the question, let's move on to our second question from our sample survey. And to do that, we're going to jump down to our next variable underneath the name category. The second question asks, what is your gender? So for this variable, we're just going to call it gender. Let's begin by typing gender in the second row underneath the name attribute. After typing gender, hit the tab key on your keyboard. We're going to skip over the variable type and we want to leave it numeric. You're probably asking, okay, well, male and female are not numbers. Why would we use a numeric type? Well, the answer to that question is twofold. One, it's going to help minimize the size of our file because as you know, male is four characters long and female is six characters long. So if you administer this survey to let's say 10,000 people, that is going to be at least 40,000 characters right there just from your gender variable. Now, instead of typing male and female every single time, what if instead we typed in a one for females and a two for males? Okay, that makes it a little bit small of a file as well as the second thing that is positive out of this is it makes it simpler for us to enter in data. So if you are inputting those 10,000 individuals, instead of typing male, female, female, male, we could type in two, one, one, two. A lot simpler. Let's go ahead and work with the decimal places. This is another factor that's gonna help minimize our file. So instead of typing in 1.00, we just need to type in one. Let's click in the decimals column. And using the spin arrows, let's decrease the number of decimal places down to zero. After we've minimized our number of decimal places, we can also decrease the width because we only need one character spacing to type in a number one for females or a number two for males. So let's go ahead and decrease the width to one. Once again, we are going to elaborate on the variable name by typing in the actual question in our label category. Let's type the second question, what is your gender? And using this values attribute, we're going to be able to associate a number with our genders. So this is essentially going to explain why we have a numeric type applied to our gender variable. Let's click in our value attribute and click on the gray ellipsis box. Our values labels text box is going to appear and here is where we're going to define the numerical value for each of our genders. So let's begin by clicking in the values text box and type one. Then click in the label text box and type female. Once completed, click on the add button. The fields will reset and now we can work on our males. In the value text box, type two. Then in the label text box, type male. Once completed, click the add button to add your male equation. Click the okay button. The third question asks, what is your GPA? Type GPA, then hit your tab key. In the label attribute, Type in the question, what is your GPA?